Do you manage multiple unified sites and your on-site controllers are just not cutting it? Stay tuned, in this video I show you step by step how to set up a cloud-hosted unified controller. Welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. So in my last video, I showed you step by step how to set up a unified network, managing it with a cloud key. If you haven't seen that video, I'm going to leave a link for it in this video description. In this video, however, I'll be showing you step by step how to set up a cloud hosted unified controller. So for instance, if you had a site that used the unified system and you wanted to get access to the site remotely to monitor it or probably to make configuration changes. One of the options you have is to have an on-site controller. For example, this could be a cloud key. A cloud key would use the internet connection to allow connectivity and remote management to you. This type of setup usually works fine. However, there are some limitations. For instance, let's say the cloud key went down or there's an issue with that internet connection. In either of these two cases, you will not receive any type of notification, right? So that's one of the main drawbacks of this type of setup. Also, if you manage multiple sites, this type of setup could be a bit tedious. In this next scenario, say we have multiple unified locations that we need to manage and monitor centrally. Because of the limitations identified earlier with the cloud key or the on-site controller, this may not be ideal for this type of application. In cases like these where we are required to manage multiple unified sites, especially in production environments, we want something with easier centralized management. And this is where the cloud-hosted unified controller comes in. All of your sites would use the internet to connect to and be managed through the single controller in the cloud. Also if there are any issues at a particular location, say for instance there's a network issue or there's an issue with the internet connection at that location, because the, lo the controller is not hosted locally, you would receive an email notification letting you know that there's an issue at that particular location. So the main advantages for this type of setup are it allows for email notifications in the event of any sort of outages. Also, it gives you easier centralized management. So for the cloud hosted controller, I'm going to be using Microsoft's Azure. I'm currently logged into my Azure portal and I'm going to go to virtual machines and create. At this screen, you want to select a resource group for your virtual machine. You could go ahead and create one if you don't have a resource group. However, I already have a resource group named Unify. I'm going to select this to save my VM. Next, I'm going to give my virtual machine a name. I'm going to keep it simple. So I'm just going to name it Cloud Controller. So the OS I'll be running on this VM is Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS. And for the server size, my one is currently set to D2S version 3. I'm using this in a production environment, so this is a size requirement for my particular network. However, you may need a different size. To do that, simply click change size. And here you'd have the options of different sizes that you'll be able to use. The B1S, this should be fine for a single site or if you have a few locations that you require to manage. The specifications should be fine. Also, remember if you're taking this for an extended period of time, for instance for a three-year contract, the prices that you're seeing here would be much cheaper. For my particular scenario, the D2S version 3, this is what I'll be using. But as I said, you could choose something based on the size of your network that you'll be managing. Next up, we're going to change the authentication type to password. 
and you're going to create a username and a password to log into your VM. Right, so my username is unified and I'm going to create my password. The password needs to be alphanumeric, right? letters, numbers, as well as a symbol. And for the inbound ports, I'm going to select allow selected ports. Right, and we're gonna allow the SSH port which is 22. Right, so we're gonna need this SSH port open to configure the initial setup. Next, I'm gonna go to the review and create tab, and this just gives us a summary of the VM's configuration. Right, once you identify that everything is as it should be, we're gonna select create. And just give it a minute or two for it to create your Azure VM. So it says that our deployment has succeeded, right? So it's completed. So what we want to do is go to resource. So as you can see, it says that the status of our virtual machine is running. So this machine is currently active and here we can see the public and private IP address information. So what we want to do is we want to connect to this VM to begin configuring our cloud controller. Before we do that, we need to make some firewall changes. So I'm going to select the networking tab. Next, we want to add an inbound port rule. So the port number we want to add is 8080. This is the port that adoption takes place on. And we're going to name it port 8080 as well. Select add and give it a few seconds for the port rule to be created. So the port rule was created successfully. We look in the list, we see that the port 8080 has been added. Next, we're going to add another inbound port rule. So the port we'll be adding is 8443. We're going to name it 8443 as well. This is needed for the controllers API and GUI when accessing on a web browser. Give it a few seconds again for the port rule to be created. As you can see, the rule was created successfully. Next, I want to go back to the overview tab. And here we're going to connect our VM. So you're going to select connect. And we're going to copy the login credentials. All right, so these login credentials will be using to log into our virtual machine. If you go all the way to the top, you see Cloud Shell. This allows us to initiate the SSH connection to the VM. So we're going to click on this and I'm just going to expand my window. Next, we're going to paste the credentials that we copied earlier, right here. And select Enter. I'm going to type in Yes to continue and enter next we want to enter the vm's password and click enter so now that we have successfully logged into our vm we need to run the necessary scripts to have the unified controller software installed on this vm to do that we're going to go to this website so I'm going to leave the URL for this website in my video description. We're going to follow these steps to have the controller software installed. So we're going to start with step one. So step one says to copy the link location of the script. So we're going to scroll all the way down, right? And we're going to find the latest version of the script. 
so that will be 5.12.35 I'm gonna right click and copy link address so next up step 2 so step 2 says the SSH to our Ubuntu server we have already done this so we're gonna move on to step 2a 2a says to make sure the certificates package is installed so to do that we need to copy the script and paste it in our VM but before we do that we want to paste the original script that we copied earlier for the location of the controller version right so we're gonna open a notepad and I'm gonna paste this link next I'm gonna copy the script I'm going to paste the script here, but before I do that, I'm going to type in the sudo command since we need root privileges. I'm going to also go back here before the app get command and I'm going to type in sudo as well and then I'm going to press enter. I'm going to give it a few seconds for the packages to be installed. Alright, great. So now that the packages have been installed, we're going to move on to the other step. So step 3 says to download the script by executing the following command. But remember, when you're, exec when you're executing the following command, you need to change it to the version that you want. So remember, we actually copied and pasted the version information earlier in this URL. So we're going to use this version, we're going to copy back this link, right, and we're going to type the wget command to get this particular version of the script. And remember, we need to enter a sudo command since we would need privileges in order to do this. sudo wget, and we're going to paste the script location. The script has been downloaded successfully. Next, we're going to move to step 4, which says to make the script executable. So if we look at the version we copied earlier, it's actually the same version used in the example. So I'm just going to copy this command. And I'm going to type the sudo command once more and paste the command here. And I'm going to select enter. So now that the script is executable, we're going to move on to step 5, which says to run the script. Alright, so again, we're just going to copy and paste this command. So I'm going to copy the command and sudo paste the command and enter. So now the script would be executed and it's going to actually be downloading all the dependencies and packages needed for your unified controller. So this could take a few minutes to get done. So it's asking me if I want to keep the script on my system after completion. Why not? I'm going to select Y for yes and press enter. Next it's asking me if I want to add the script to the source file list. Why not? I'm going to select yes as well. So it's asking me if I want to download and install Let's Encrypt script. So I'm going to see like no for this example because in a future video I'll show you how to set up a domain name, map it to your IP address as well as install SSL certification then. I'd like to uninstall Netcat, I'm going to select N for no. And that's it. Our unified controller has been successfully installed. So if you select this web address here. This should take you to your unified controller. So I'm just going to click on it. And as you can see, we have a certification error. And this is because we don't have SSL encryption installed. So I'm just going to ignore this right now. So to do this on Chrome, I'm going to select Advanced and Proceed. And voila, I'm sure this screen looks familiar to a lot of you. So this is the Unify Setup Wizard. So here you could create a name for your network and accept the license agreement and select Next. 
Next, you want to enter your unified credentials here. So if you don't have a unified account, you could go to unify.ui.com and create an account for free there. Once you enter your credentials, select next. So here you have the options to have your network automatically optimized and enable auto backup. I'm going to leave those options on. Select next. So for devices setup, I'm going to create another video showing you how to adapt devices to your controller in the cloud. So I'm going to select next and Wi-Fi setup. I'm going to skip that for now. So here you can review your configuration. I'm just going to change my country name to Trinidad and Tobago and I'm going to select finish. Just give it a few seconds for the configuration to take effect. And congratulations, your controller is up and running. So as it says, everything is great. So I'm just going to show you what I was explaining earlier where you could create and manage multiple sites from this controller. So I'm going to add a new site. So I'm going to name this site test one. In fact, I'm going to name this site branch office one. Submit. I'm going to go back and create another site. So I'm going to name this site Branch Office 2. And last but not least, I'm going to create one final site and I'm going to name this Branch Office 3. Right, so if we go back up here to sites, you see there you have your three branch offices. And what makes this particular setup so powerful is if you go to site overview. Right here you actually have a bird's eye view of all your different locations. Right, and you have you see your alerts, your WAN connection, your LAN, your your current user account, your clients, you know, so you can manage all these different locations through the single pane of glass. So I'm going to be showing you more upcoming videos where we go a little more deeper into this. And if you go to the devices tab, here you see a list of the devices at this current location. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to add devices to your cloud hosted controller. So that's something you're not going to want to miss. And that brings us to the end of the configuration of our cloud hosted controller. And thanks again for viewing this video guys. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to add devices to your cloud hosted unified controller. So if you're interested in seeing that video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is uploaded. Thanks again for viewing. See you soon.